Joyfully sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. We should rejoice because the Lord has taken away the judgments against us. You can't rejoice because of your reputation, can you? Human beings of all times and places are judgmental. Even you, you yourselves are judgmental. You make judgments upon others. You take a judgment against myself. Take myself, for instance, a simple shepherd in the time of Jesus. Some even scholars of your day have concluded that I was an outcast of society. Listen to what they say about me. One scholar in 1893 said, shepherds at this time, time of Jesus, were a despised class. Another scholar in 1924 said, the shepherds were despised people. Still closer to your time, in 1992, another so-called scholar said, in general, shepherds were dishonest and unclean, according to the standards of the law. They represent outcasts and sinners for whom Jesus came. And again, from your own century, the teachers of law consider them to be religious outcasts, and their testimony was not admissible in court. What do they know? Scholars, really? They didn't live in my day. No, they lived 2,000 years later, in your time period. They are false judges. Let me tell you something about their judgments. They base their claims on three main sources. First, the Greek, not Jewish, but Greek philosopher Aristotle, who called us shepherds lazy. What did he know? He was just a Gentile. And he lived 300 years before my time. Not Jewish. Second, these so-called scholars would go to the Jewish Mishnah. The Mishnah is a collection of sayings that was ultimately written 200 years after Jesus' life on earth. Once again, well replaced 200 years after my life. Third source was a Babylonian Talmud, which was com compiled 500 years after Jesus, once again out of date. It is not helpful looking at the New Testament because the rabbis were so far removed from the first century. Let me be perfectly clear to you. We shepherds were not social outcasts. Look at the Bible. And what does it say about us shepherds? Three of the greatest men of the Old Testament were shepherds. Abraham, Moses, David, all shepherds. God identifies himself with the metaphor of a shepherd. The psalmist write, the Lord is my shepherd. Ezekiel the prophet says, as a shepherd looks for his sheep on the day he is among his scattered flock, so I will look for my flock. And last but not least, Jesus himself calls himself the good shepherd. Even in today's society, in today's world, spiritual leaders are called shepherds. That leads me back to tell my story. A story of professing my joy. Not based on reputation, but based on Jesus. There we were out in the fields. We were doing what we do, taking care of our sheep, making sure no wild animals attack them, letting them graze, caring for them. It is no easy task, but we love it. Better yet, we love our sheep. I will never forget that particular occasion on that night. All of a sudden, the messenger of the Lord showed up right there with us in the field. His appearance was magnificent with God's glory shining all around him. I've never been more afraid in my life. It's the last thing you expect when you're shepherding. At night, we usually expect to fight off an attacking animal, stalking our sheep. That's when we were startled. We were trembling in great fear, and we were in shock. The angel said to us, Fear not, for behold, I bring you Good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For you was born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Messiah, the Lord. 
Imagine that. The Messiah prophesied to be born in Bethlehem. We were speechless. Probably because of our trembling, we had so much fear. The angel continued, This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a feeding trough. We were speechless. Our jaws dropped to the ground, and that was just the beginning. All of a sudden, there appeared the angel, a large multitude of angels. They praised God. Their voices rang out in the night air. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those with whom he is pleased. Then they vanished. They vanished from our eyes. At first we were speechless, but then we looked at each other and we, we had to go and search and find what this grand event was all about. We said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that the Lord has made known to us. We ran. We ran fast. We found the mother, Mary was her name, and the father, Joseph, and especially that baby lying there in a manger. You know the kind of joy that enters your heart and you can't but go and share the reason for it with others? That's the joy we experienced. When we saw it, we told others what we experienced. Everyone who heard it wondered at what they, we said to them. No, they didn't marvel at us being shepherds. We were respected. They marveled at what we told them. This was the Christ, the Messiah. And we returned to our work. We were glorifying and praising God for all what we had seen and what we had heard. What a great joy we experienced. It's the joy that you have also. The joy that should motivate you also to share that story of Jesus with others. For Jesus, the one who was born, that baby, grew up and died for our sins. And he took away our sins. He didn't judge us. He loved and died for us. That we now have forgiveness. Forgiveness and a relationship with our God. So we rejoice. Praise God. Praise God indeed. 